Uh, hey, Jabba, you got a break today. You have to bear with me. I'm tired. It was so very early this morning. That's why I didn't say I was going to do nothing today. But this is kind of too good to wait until tomorrow. Plus, I had something special in store for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I was up. I was at Kenny's house at 60. They had to go up to Home Depot with him. He's just building a family room down in his basement. And, uh, he wants to sheetrock. You know, some people, you know, you, it, it is a nice cement foundation. It's not like the foundation I got here. That's the older one, you know. But it's actually rocks and shit cemented together. It's not like a poured foundation. A new house. This house was built like in 19, uh, 1942, something like that. You know. And a lot of people with basements like that, they just paint the walls. Well, you want sheetrock and stuff. So you got to do framing. You can't, you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, attach sheetrock to concrete so even though according it's building code you got a permit and everything where it's going to be non load bearing walls they're just walls to put up for framing purposes to attach sheet rock or blue board to you know whatever just for an attachment purpose it's not going to be holding any weight you don't need to use two by fours you know you can go smaller but he wants a two by four he wants so anyway say brian i gotta pick up a shit order two by fours home depot uh we throw them in the back here at kds they put the seat down Went by his house, went out for breakfast for us, had breakfast, and we went and picked up. I had the back of my Acadia loaded up, man. It was sticking out the back, but they weren't going to fall out. We had a rag tied on it. They weren't sticking out too far, because with the seat down, I was talking about maybe this much sticking out, you know, eight footers, you know. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you, I, I could just, you got to do all the footing at the bottom, you know, you know, it was a 16 inch, you know, all, all you know. And it's, well, it's going to be a 20, 24 by 24 by 18 room. So it requires a lot of two by fours. So, uh, the guy says, you're going to be okay driving home like that? Back of my kid, he was like this. I could barely see out the fucking rear view mirror. Anyway, and then the hard part was there's a shitload of them, man. You know, grabbing three and four at a time. And going in this back door of this fucking house, through the kitchen and down into the basement stairs. Like an obstacle course, trying not to fucking hit shit and break shit. You know, we had up and down, up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs. I'm fucking tired, man. Hey, Job, you should try that sometime. You really would end up on fucking life support. You ever did what I did this morning. But anyway, I got to tell you. Oh, before I forget, I have a new buddy. Tony's Hot Dog Garage. Yeah, you left me a real flattering comment on my video yesterday. He's all upset at me. Tony's Hot Dog Garage. That's what I call him from now on. Tony's hot dog. <laughs> you have to call me. Oh, Tony, uh, hey, Tony, I blocked you, by the way. Yeah, he was all pissed off at me. He said, he doesn't like the fact that me and my clan, he called it a clan. What's the matter? I'm not worthy of having a cult like Sanford. I, I can only have a clan. I can't have a cult like him. Anyway, he said that me and my clan, he's not happy with us that we keep picking on him and all his no-show national boys. He doesn't like that. He's mad. He's upset. Oh, poor baby. You need a tissue? Anyway, figured I'd let you know. I'll tell you, man, my popularity just keeps growing on here. It's amazing, isn't it? And I'm not even begging for subs and views like these other guys. It's happening all by itself. Uh... This is great. I watched it, and I'm fucking tired. I gotta take a shower, and uh, go grocery shop this afternoon, and tonight, knuckleheads with the crew. So, somebody sent me, Brian, you gotta see this. Well, I guess uh, Sandy, in a very delicate way, is throwing Sanford under the bus now. There's 318 now. There's an update on it. It's been a fucking year and a half since Sanford ran his mouth on it. And Sanfi had to lay it all out once and for all, explain what's been going on and why it's, why it's taking so long. <laughs> Fucking Sanford's famous for what I like to call self-justification videos. When he gets his ass nailed to a wall, he's trapped in a corner like a fucking cockroach and there's a pointy fucking boot coming at him, you know what I mean? He's got to say something. Uh, I guess Sandy's doing it now. So from what I hear, these guys have been hit a lot with, hey, it's up at 318, hey, it's up at 318. So now he's, uh, watch the video. Go watch it. 
in a very delicate way. He's throwing Sanford under the bus now, blaming Sanford for why it's taking so long. <laughs> it's fucking hysterical. Well, Sanford, you know, at least I have to admit, Sandy has been a little more diplomatic about it. He's trying to, you know, he's throwing, he's definitely throwing Sanford under the bus and blaming Sanford for everything. Even so, Sanford walked away because he didn't like the direction it was going. And then, uh, and then when San, Sanford found out that that dude, Charlie the Tuna, in Florida, is, you know, doing the heads, he, uh, Sanford was all pissed off because he didn't belong being in on that project. That was his project. That was his dream, his imagineering, his collaboration. That guy's got no business being involved in it. And like people in the comments are pointing out, well, like I said, what? Why the fuck? Hey, Sanford, why the fuck weren't you involved in it from day one? All you did was drop off a jump 318, make a big, bold claim, blah, 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 get these guys in on it, and you walked away and wanted them to do all the work, hoping it would work out, turn out the way you wanted, and then you take the fucking credit for it, like you always do. Use people. There's one comment on there that's great. I'd love to shake this motherfucker's hand, I tell you. He said, what's wrong with people? Don't you see how Sanford gets what he wants from people, and then when he can't get it, if you just disagree with him, don't go along with what he says. He cuts you out of his life, and he, you know, throws you under a bus. Imagine what he does when he's away from YouTube. Well, I can tell you for a fact, I know two people that were around him in his shop. Do I need to say their names? One of them was my ex-boyfriend, the Cabbage Patch. Got the one wham shop. The guy with that green satellite, he was coming gone. Stubby was coming gone. The guy with the GTX was coming gone. He brings people in. This guy even said he brings people in to use them for content for his channel to get views to make money. But the first time they disagree with him, don't go along with what he says, doesn't do what they tell him, doesn't do what he tells them they have to do. He fucking boots them. He even said, that's Sanford's track record. You know? He's like God. His ego and narcissism is in the fucking stratosphere. He's a full-blown sociopath. And he's a rude asshole. Just the way he talks to people. Even Tony Sprain. A lot of people think, you swear you need to be around this guy away from YouTube. He swears more than you. He's vulgar. He's a slob. He stinks even. He don't even take a shower half the time. You get near him, he smells like fucking B.O. ass crack and ball sweat. The guy's a fucking pig, a slob, no fucking class. And a lazy motherfucker that is a hack with cars. But for him to keep his channel going, he needs content. He knows he can't do shit, so he brings people in, projects and dibbles and dabbles. And first time they say, oh, wait a minute, no. First time, you just disagree. He said, Brian, you just disagree with him on the smallest little thing. He blows up. What the fuck's about? Don't be telling me what to do. This is my shop. You get the fuck out of here, then. Hey, Job, are you happy? Don't worry. I'll get to you tomorrow. But yeah, I thought this was interesting. You know? And Sandy says, Sandy, what's wrong with you? Seriously. Don't you know how Sanford is? Haven't you? One guy's even said, haven't you seen what Sanford has done to so many people along the way? People he no longer bothers with. They were always buddies. And like I hear this fucking, uh, was it Dr. Doolittle guy? He's got him now crawling around a fucking junkyard with him. He got Captain Kangaroo now. It's no longer doing nice custom cars. He's got him riding around. I said Sanford's right. If Sanford won't, if you won't let Sanford drag you down to his level and agree with everything he says, he no longer has a use for you. He cuts you out of his life. You don't even want to hear your fucking name. Look what he did to these two fucking guys already. I've said that. Sanford drags people down to his level. He'll never elevate you to a higher learning level of any automotive knowledge, wisdom, engine building, card building of any fucking kind. He's not capable himself. He likes the dumb fucks. He likes the people that will do what he tells them to do. You know, a guy pointed it out. Several people pointed it out very clearly. And it's, 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 Sandy, how come you being... Didn't he fuck you over enough at the No-Show Nationals? You, you too, Big Woba. Are you still his buddy? Huh? Are you still hanging out with Sanford? You calling him on the phone? You planning on doing any more joint live streams with him, huh? What's the matter? How come you won't speak up either? 
Even though I think all you guys are a bunch of fucking assholes too, I thought at least one of you would have the fucking balls to stand up and tell it like it is with this with this motherfucker. What you afraid of him? You fucking cowards! <laughs> Seriously, right from that's why I called the No Show Nationals. You were hyping and promoting him in Dallas too, and. All you guys, man, you were making him the crown jewel center of attraction. He fucked you guys over good because you didn't want to pay him. He, he wanted a piece of the gate. Hey, it's a big star of attraction. You know, you know, NHRA, HRA, that have, you know. I remember just to have the Coca-Cola. I was really on cavalcade of stars. I didn't see that in the Wing and Drag. I saw Gene Snow, you know. I saw uh, Joe Amato. I used to like him. I always saw my buddy Bobby Tasker and his family up there with their cars. Others, you know. Uh, saw Jungle Jim Weaverman. You know, Tommy Ivo, they bring in a ringer. They paid him just to show up, make one pass against some no-name local racer. Of course, they're going to fucking win. But just so it looks better with two cars going down the track, they'd always have them wait till at night. They hung around all day in the pits in their trailer, signing autographs, T-shirts, and whatnot, taking pictures and making money on the side there. It packed the stands with asses and seats to go see these famous racers. And then at night, especially Ivo and Lieberman, Jim, uh, They'd always wait till at night in his dock and, and they'd set him up with a match race with some fucking local yokel that, you know, was really non-competitive. But it looks good with two cars. You know, they do their burnouts. They were famous for their fire burnouts. I saw Gene Snow one time do a fire burnout there. He was, I saw a lot of them back, you know, in the seventies when I was young, when I used to go up there with my uncle and when Tasker was running their cars, my uncle especially would go up and I'd be there too with them. And, uh, I've seen a lot of them, you know, they do their fire burnouts, more spectacular at night. Then during the afternoon, they make their one run, and then they, they go home, and these races make a lot of money. The track made a fucking fortune. The seats were packed every fucking time. Sanford, I guess he thought he was a big fucking name draw. It was going to draw people to go watch that fucking race, to watch him race Baby Bottle Rocket. We know the deal with that between him and Sandy, too. You know what I mean? He fucked you guys over good. And there were many other people that had to call out challenges to Sanford. He fucking ignored them. Oh, it only had to be Sandy. Yeah, because he had a... He had that rigged race set up, which eventually took place. Okay, listen, okay, listen, you got to let me win, you know. Sanford's credibility was already on shaky ice. The last thing he could afford to do was lose that race against that fucking Casper, the not-so-friendly ghost. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man, that was all bullshit. How many more times does Sanford need to fuck you guys over before you see what he is? You know what? As much as he's fucked up, I think you assholes are even more fucked up than him. You're too afraid to fucking stand up to that guy. You know something, there are some people that are not. I won't get into it. I could get in trouble for expressing, you can't express violent content on here. You know, I'll leave it at that. Sanford's lucky he hasn't <laughs> come face to face with some people. He wouldn't get away with the bullshit. You guys let him. You know why Sanford does what he does? Because you motherfuckers let him get away with it. People only do what you allow them to. Don't blame them, blame yourself. You know, so Sandy now in a very, <laughs> he's throwing Sanford under a bus, but he's, he's trying to do it in a nice way. So what, you don't want Sanford to get mad at you? Huh? What's the matter? Are you afraid of him? Are you afraid of him? With a Crypt Keeper, come on. Crypt Keeper's afraid of a fucking bowel movement that could put him on fucking life support. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Jobby, you got some competition there with the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Something coming out of your ass could kill both of you. <laughs> With him a turd. With you gas. Don't worry, I'll get to you tomorrow. Anyway, this was too fucking good to wait. Unbelievable. Yeah, go check it out. It's very, very, I don't think I've ever said, you know, go watch this video. I think you should go watch this video. It's very interesting. All the excuses. Just like Sanford. All the excuses as to why nothing's been happening. And, oh, well, Sanford, you know, we got held back because Sanford didn't want to get involved. It was his project. He even showed the beginning of it. And even in the fucking beginning, when he showed it, the collaboration, Sanford's got to steal the fucking show. You even got the camera in his face, and you see the Crip Keeper and Sandy in the back. And they're like, hey, they want to be in. And Sanford, oh, oh, uh, oh, you can't see them too? And they're like trying to. He's an attention whore. An egomaniac, a narcissist, a sociopath.
and also a third-rate hack mechanic. That's a con man money hustler on here. Hey, you wanted to get involved with this guy. That's what you got. Shouldn't you have known better? Anybody watching that, you know, Sanford ever gets in touch with you? Hey, listen, hey, I'm thinking about doing something. You want to come in on it with me? Come down to my shop here. We'll, uh, we'll do a project together. Expect to do all the work. Expect to get yelled at. Expect to have him swear at you. And expect to have him kick you out of his fucking shop the first time. You say, oh, wait a minute. No, I think we should do it this way. You're out of here. Hey, you want to meet God? <laughs> you religious? <laughs> you have your fucking chance for Sanford. He thinks he's fucking God. One guy even said he, he, he thinks he's holier than thou and walks on water. I'll tell you, the fucking comments are great. And there was some, oh, I can't wait to see that. And you still got you same fucking asshole still living on a fucking pipe dream and a wing and a prayer. I think this engine's actually going to get built. Oh, I can't wait to see you get back to work on it. <laughs> Bunch of fucking idiots. Okay, I'm real tired. I got to take a shower. And, uh... <sighs> And then we're going to go out and have lunch, stop and grab some lunch somewhere, and then do our grocery shop and come home. And I'm actually hoping to come home early enough so I can lay down and take a fucking nap for a couple of hours. <laughs> Wrap myself up in a blanket and snooze for a couple hours. Say, hey, I'm tired, and i got a damn good fucking reason to be tired, you know what I mean? And uh, but when I'm laying down, you know, taking a nap, I'm going to put my camera going and shoot a video so people can watch me laying there wrapped in a blanket like this. And once in a while, mumble, 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 you know. And I'll try my best not to fight. No, you're not going to see that. There are some things you just don't put out here on YouTube. If you have any sense of self-respect, dignity, and class. Have a great day.